two roads diverged in a wood and I took the road less traveled and it made all the difference. These were the famous lines of Robert Frost. It's a great honor to welcome into our midst one such person, a fine gentleman and a living example to all of us to have strong conviction and integrity, to stand up against social evils like bribery. It's indeed a great pleasure to have you here, sir. Let us all put our hands together to welcome Mr. Yu Sahayam, IAS and Vice Chairman, Science City, Chennai. Mr. Yu Sahayam is a senior IAS officer in Tamil Nadu who is widely known and appreciated for his anti-corruption activities. The youngest of five sons, he says that his mother taught him honesty. His office door bears a sign, reject bribes, hold your hell hi head high. In 2000, he sealed the Pepsi-Cola bottling plant near Chennai after finding dirt in many bottles. In 2004, he confiscated 5,000 subsidized domestic gas cylinders in three days. In 2009, he created history by becoming the first IAS officer in Tamil Nadu to upload details of his assets on the district website. In March 2011, the Election Commission handpicked Mr. Sahayam to oversee the elections in Madurai. In 2012, he submitted a 13-page report to the Tamil Nadu government showing that the state has lost rupees 16,000 crores to the illegal quarrying in Madurai. Over 5,000 villagers protested against one of his transfers forcing to withdrawal. Mr. Sahayam's effort to eliminate corruption has led to be his being transferred over 20 times in his two decades of public service. He has also won him a reputation for probity in the words of a reporter. The common man's collector has become the hero of the local landlord. One of his fans, a taxi driver, says he's strict and hasn't even taken 10 paisa in bribe during his career. He's like the upright collector they show in some films, a real hero with integrity. May I have the pleasure of inviting Mr. Yu Sahayam, IAS Vice Chairman, Science City, to present the valedictory address. Dear Dr. Thomas Franco, correspondent, and other dignitaries on the dais, my dear teachers, Welcome to you all. At the outset, I would like to express my sincere and profound thanks to the organizers of this program for having invited me to be part of this great event. Normally, Every year I will be getting around 600 to 700 invitations from empty number of schools, colleges, Rotary and Lions clubs, associations of different and divergent nature and so on. But I am not able to go and speak in all the meetings they have invited an account of paucity of time. I am always so selective. It depends upon the audience I am going to address. Today I am selective. Since I am going to address a teachers, I was very specific I have to make it. I always uh, think that the teachers are so significant and essential and integral part of a social development and nation's building. Their contribution is crucial and vital. Their work is uh, immense and enormous. They need to be encouraged and appreciated and that is the reason I have decided to be present here on this nice occasion. Kothari Commission, you must be aware, 
Kothari Commission was constituted to suggest measures reforming the education system in the country. In its report, Kothari Commission has clearly indicated that India is being shaped in classrooms. India is being shaped in classrooms. I totally agree with that. Today, my dear teachers, you are shaping India. You are making India. You are producing the future nation builders. And therefore, I consider you so significant, important to me, to the society, to the nation. And I still remember Dr. Radhakrishnan, the former president of this country. He was president. He was vice president earlier. He was ambassador working abroad. In fact, he was a great thinker, philosopher, writer, speaker, and so on. When he became the president of this country, the reporters asked him, which job you most like, which task you have performed, task of different and divergent nature. You held many positions. You have done so many works in different spheres, in different fields. Which job you most like? The reporter asked Dr. Radhakrishnan. Radhakrishnan said, without an iota of hesitation, I prefer teaching job. Because he was earlier teacher. So that was a job he liked most, though he became the president of this country. And therefore, I am teaching you so significant and important to the social development and nation building. Don't think that you are so insignificant. Don't think that you are unimportant. Be positive that your role is crucial. You always think that you are building the nation. And you are supposed to be updated. Today also, when the announcement was made, and I thought uh, she was yet to be updated because she said that I was transferred 19 times in two decades. But it is actually 23 times in 23 years. So I expect the teachers to be updated in their subjects. That is the reason I would like to know she remind this. I still remember Dr. Abdul Kalam, the former president, the former president of this country, Dr. Abdul Kalam. I still remember I was district collector Namakal in 2009. When I was collector Namakal, he visited Salem Sona Engineering College. In fact, he addressed a large gathering, mainly students. He spoke to the students. See, one of the, at the end of the meeting, one of the students asked him, Sir, you were able to achieve the greater heights in the country. You were born in an ordinary village, in a tiny village called Rameswaram. Today you were able to achieve greater heights. You have become the president of this country. Can you indicate the name of the hero who really inspired you? One of the students, a student asked him, can you indicate, sir? Can you indicate the name of the hero from who you drew inspiration, who inspired you, who guided you? who really occupied your heart and mind. Can you indicate the name of the hero? Everyone expected. Dr. Kalam will tell, will indicate the name of the Prime Ministers under whom he worked as the principal advisor, scientific advisor. No, he did not indicate the name of the, any of the Prime Ministers under whom he worked. And somebody thought, probably he will indicate the name of the, some of the senior bureaucrats, IAS officers who remained honest, courageous, capable. No, he did not indicate name of any of the IAS officers as his hero. Somebody, somebody thought, people, many people in the audience, probably they would have thought, Abdul Kalam will indicate name of some of the senior scientists who really aided him, who guided him, who motivated him, who encouraged him in the inception stage, in the initial stage. In the budding stage when he started his career as a scientist, no, he has not indicated name of the, any of the scientists under whom he worked. At the end he said, my real hero, is my real hero, my real hero is Siva Subramanya Iyer, 
the teacher, the teacher, primary school teacher in the Tamil medium school located in Rameswaram who taught whatever was asked by Dr. Kalam, he was able to teach him. So Siva Subramanya Iyer was a teacher in the primary school in the Tamil medium school in the tiny, tiny village called Rameswaram and he remained the source of inspiration even for the president. My dear teachers, you are going to remain inspiration and encouragement to hundreds and thousands of students. They are going to remember you. You are going to create history. I still remember, I still remember when I was first time when I was appointed as district collector, before I was appointed as district collector of Madurai, I was posted as district collector Namakal. That was in close proximity to Salem, many of you are aware. I was posted as district collector for the first time in Namakal, in Namakal. So before I joined, I wanted to meet two people. I wanted to meet two people. Number one, I just wanted to meet my mother. My mother to get greetings and blessing from her. Because, because many, many, many times I have indicated, today I, re I remain honest and courageous that is because I drew inspiration from my mother mother has taught me my mother has taught me a simple a simple a simple lady not that educated she taught me honesty she taught me truth she told me don't deviate from the path of truth don't deviate from the path of justice and honesty you have to remain honest you have to remain true you have to remain just to the last day of your career. So I basically I wanted to meet her and get a blessing. She was in my village, a tiny village in Pudukote district. So I went and met her. I received a blessing from her. She was not, you know, she, she, she was not maintaining health. She was ailing. So I couldn't take her to Namakal district where I was going to join as district collector. Though I was willing to take her. So I received a you know, blessing from her. She said, go help her. Go help her as a district collector. That's a message I received from her. And thereafter I wanted to meet another important person. Thereafter I wanted to meet another important person. Who was she? Who was she? Very important person. He was, I, I wanted to meet him. I get, you know, see, blessing from him. Who was he? He was my teacher. He was my teacher in the middle school, Panchayat Union Middle School, Yalaipati. It's a small village. We used to call him Periyavatiyar, headmaster in those days. Those days in small village, we don't say headmaster. We say Periyavatiyar. His name was Narayana Sami. He remained a source of great source of inspiration. He only told me Sahayam. One day you have to become district collector in the state. One day you have to become district collector in the state. I was hailing from an ordinary family. I was hailing from an ordinary family. My father was a small farmer. I am really proud to say that I am son of a poor ordinary farmer. Ordinary farmer. I was hailing from an agrarian family. Agrarian family. My father was not that much educated, but still, I still, Narayana Sami, the Periyavatiyar, the headmaster was able to identify, identify something different in him, this boy. So one day you have to become district collector. He encouraged me, he encouraged me. And thereafter I have become district collector in two districts, namely Namakal and Madurai. So I went and met him. I went and met him and I received the blessing from him. And he is a person who taught me most. Who taught me most. And therefore I would like to stress, I would like to emphasize, our teachers are very crucial. Therefore I would like to indicate again and again, be positive. That your role is very crucial. Be proud of your profession. Your contribution is going to be vital, crucial, important, significant in the country. Be positive, that is going to be the start of your profession. If you ask, which is the bigger job, a district collector or a teacher? I say it is only the job of the teacher is very crucial and that is a big job. I prefer to be a teacher rather than a district collector. And therefore I am again and again saying, 
be positive feel proud that you are a teacher because you are contributor you are creator you are producer you are making the country i still remember that every child is capable of learning every child is capable of succeeding don't discourage under any circumstances don't discourage any child just because that particular child does have some difficulty in learning don't discourage do you know that thomas alva edison was discouraged by his teacher he was sent out terming that this boy is not suitable for learning later on his mother took him taught him everything he became the world famous scientist and i tell you he was discouraged and he was driven out by a teacher don't do that don't discourage even a single child every child is capable of learning and every child is capable of succeeding and therefore i would like to stay i would like to state i would like to say that every child has a dream i still remember very recently two months ago i went to a small a tiny village in madurai district this village is a remotest village of madurai district namely kulipatti is a small village tiny village you have primary school tamil medium school it's a government you know run school i was invited normally i don't go to schools for you no know, see i'm making speeches going to positive time but this school i went just to encourage the school children i went there i spoke at the end you know a small boy he came to me he came to me i asked him sir he wanted to take a snap with me photo with me i asked him what's your name he said siva what's your father his father was an agriculture kuli agriculture ordinary ordinary say a poor agriculture kuli what class are you studying i asked him he said uh, he was in fourth standard i asked him what's your future plan i asked him what's your future plan what is your ambition and without any hesitation he said sir na ungala pola district collector aga pora sir ungala pola na district collector aga pora i asked him what for i asked him what for he said sir na collector aagi yelai makkalukku udavi seiya pora sir ungala pola appdin sonna what i am trying to convey that every child has a dream identify the dream of that child the children motivate them encourage them to achieve that dream that is your job i still remember every child is capable i still remember as a district collector i visited some of the, I, i i used to visit all the schools and encourage you know children for the simple reason children are true i still remember i visited one of the schools located nearby mohanur mohanur panchayat union it's a small school it's a primary school you have up to you know so uh, fifth standard it's a tamil medium school i always uh, i was in the habit in the, those days i was in the habit of asking questions in english just to encourage the tamil medium students to speak in english so i used to ask what's your name so they will say they will indicate their name the next question what is your father what's your father most of the children will not be in a position to answer this is a sordid state of affair this is a very bad condition in a country free country uh, one extreme is capable of you know see learning everything even three languages four languages the another extreme the children in fact the children of villages who are you know see who are feeding us who are responsible for all the development that takes place in urban areas their condition is extremely pathetic and pitiable they are living in utter penury and poverty so the the extreme level they are not in a position to answer even the simple question what's your father but that day one boy i asked him what's your name he said my name is satish i asked him what's your father he was able to answer the question properly so my father is a potter potter who is making pot so it was really surprising to me because this you know boy of fourth standard was in a, was in a position to answer my question i was extremely happy probably 
I don't know. Probably uh, under what circumstances? I don't. The next two question: What's your future plan? What's your ambition? I asked him. He said, "Sir, I am a doctor." Immediately he answered, "Sir, I am a doctor." I asked him, "Sir, this is it right? You are in fourth standard right now. You are not a doctor at the moment. You say that you are a doctor. You are not a doctor." Are you a doctor at the moment? You answered properly. Are you a doctor at the moment? So you are in fourth standard. Is it a right answer? I asked him. This boy was no, see, little hesitant. He looked at me because he was not in a position to answer. I also knew that I should not have troubled this no, see, poor boy of village as a collector. This is a child abuse, asking question. forcing the children to answer you know see question in an Ill, in an in a in a language which is not known to him so he was uh, standing for a while at the end at the end he was ready for answering sir i am a doctor i was under the impression that the boy will not be able to answer because the teachers would not have taught him no teacher would have taught him that my that i am going to be doctor i will become doctor i will be a doctor no teacher they would have taught him suddenly this by sir i am able to answer he looked at me and said sir i can answer i asked him i i told him to answer he said sir i am a doctor is wrong i am future doctor he said sir i am future doctor how this no see village boy the son of a potter poor potter He was able to answer. What I am trying to convey, my dear teachers, every child is capable of understanding and expressing. I also understand in some of the schools in city, they are trying to curtail and control children speaking in their mother tongue, whether it is Telugu or Tamil or other other language, Malayalam. I think it is unethical and illegal as well. you can't curtail a child you can't curtail a child speaking in their mother tongue it's a natural and spontaneous expression don't control i'm again saying that it is unethical and illegal sometimes it will lead to even prosecution so if you look at the history all the developed nations they have all taught their children in their mother tongue whether it is a german or france whether it is a china or japan whether it is a russia or even if it is for the matter england or america it is their mother tongue english i still remember one of our leaders who visited you know see japan and he visited some industries that you know the officer who was in charge of that industry was not in a position to speak in english so the leader you know see it, it was a surprising for him the because the uh, he, he was in charge of the whole you know see industry it's a big industry big factory but the officer was not in a position to answer his query or question in english or rather he was able to answer only in japanese and it was subsequently translated by another person and that was conveyed to you know the leader the leader asked him as that you know the officer in charge of that factory industry why you are not able to speak english the answer came from the japanese was we were not slaves to english ever we were not slaves to british ever that was the answer and that was a self respect they had i can't say that you can't teach you know english you have to teach but don't curtail children don't curtail children speaking expressing something in their mother tongue while talking to their friends so this is my message i would like to again say again say teachers are so significant in a country where you have 60 million 60 million children who are between the age of 6 to 14 are out of schools in a country where 40 million adults who remain unemployed 
in a country where 445 people who are living below poverty line giving education by uh, schools run by SBOA is something crucial, laudable and appreciable. You teachers are really contributing to the betterment of the society. I always tell teachers, some teacher comes to me and tell me, they, they, uh, some teacher they, comes to me and tells me, sir, my student has become an IAS officer. I recently visited Madurai. One of the teachers working in a school in Madurai, he came and told me, sir, my student has become an IPS officer very recently. I still remember some of the teachers telling me, sir, some scientists who are working in NASA in the United States are my students. I always tell the students, I always tell the teachers, my dear teachers, create a scientist, create IAS officers, good enough, create IPS officers, well appreciable. Create advocates, successful advocates who are practicing in Supreme Court, the apex court of the country, good enough. Create doctors, create engineers, along with them create good human beings in the country. Today, what we require, I still remember the words of Nani Balgiwala, a great legal luminary, and he is no more, he said a few years ago, he said India has everything. India has capability and capacity. It has ability and efficiency. What India lacks, it is the character. The character being honest. The character being true. That is what the country lacks. I request you to create students, not only with capacity, with character. You will not be a right teacher if you are not able to produce students, the future nation builders, without character. You have to produce students with the character. We require the future nation builders with the character, good character. That is what we are requesting everywhere. Whenever we speak to teachers, we ask the teacher, we request the teacher to produce the future nation builders with the character. We have capacity everywhere. The students are mischievous today. The students are mischievous. I still remember I, I am able to recall one of the incidents uh, that occurred in the life of Mahatma Gandhiji as indicated in his you know, autobiography. He was, he was in the school as a student, he was in the primary school as a student. The inspector was supposed to come and conduct inspection. The inspector came, a small test was conducted for the students. It was a spelling test, it was a spelling test. Everyone was able to write the uh, test properly, excepting Gandhiji. There was a word, kettle, and Gandhiji was not able to write it properly. It was misspelled. The teacher was able to understand that Gandhiji could not write it properly, and he came and indicated that you can copy. You look at the other students who, who, who are there, other students who are there, sitting in close proximity and copy and but uh, Gandhiji did not do that whatever he knew he wrote it was a mistake or no see, uh, presentation but whatever he knew that he wrote uh, despite the fact that the teacher wanted Gandhiji to copy Gandhiji did not do that he refused to copy at the end no, see, uh, at the end no, see, whatever he knew that he wrote it was no, see, faulty and this only indicates, even as a child, Gandhiji remained honest. This incident, some teacher was able to explain, was explaining to the students today. In one of the classes run by you know, schools like you, teacher asked, what do you think about Gandhiji? The Gandhiji did not write, did not copy the other student, despite the fact that the teacher had indicated, instructed him to do so. The Gandhiji refused to copy. What do you think about you know, Gandhiji? All the students remained silent. One of the students normally who doesn't answer, who did not answer earlier, he stood up and said, Sir, I don't know what you know. No one knows in the small age, no one knows what you know. No one knows what you know. No one knows what you know. 
the students are mischievous enjoy the mischief that also indicates the capacity that also obviously indicates the capacity and therefore i request again and again produce students who have social responsibility even the great scientist like einstein he says he says exactly a hundred times a day i remind myself my inner and outer life depends on the labor of the people who are living and dead and therefore i need to extend in the same measure and manner as i have received and i have been receiving from them this only indicates that everyone is a social being social animal we are supposed to contribute to the society to the nation the way we have received from the society i request you to produce people with the character who can ultimately contribute substantially to the society and nation with these few words i would like to wind up, wind up my speech thank you so much thank you sir for making us all feel special as teachers and inspiring us to always walk the authentic path no matter what it will help us all to emulate people like you who dare to be different and create their own destiny we salute you sir